Welcome back. We've nearly completed the few endpoints required for the REST API of our application. We created these by creating a polls controller to handle incoming HTTP requests and outgoing responses. We provided this controller to our polls module, giving our controller access to other features or services that we want to integrate into this module. Today, we will create something similar to a controller, but for WebSockets. WebSockets is a way to make real-time two-way communication between a client and a server. I wanted to do this because I find a lot of work with Nest.js or other tutorials are very basic. Furthermore, I've seen very few examples of creating a server that uses both HTTP, for example, to connect to a poll, and WebSockets for the portion when we want to send data back and forth in real time. I just want to reference you to the Socket.io homepage, which is a library which we will be using to work with WebSockets. This is the tool that will allow our various participants into the poll to see the other nominations from other users, or perhaps when those users have voted. If we scroll down, we can look at a very basic example. You see that there are first a server side library and secondly, a client side library on the right. On the server, they create a very basic server on port 3000 here. And then you have this handler that says when there is a connection, it registers a socket. And this socket is related to individual client applications. And in this example, that client application would be running in someone's browser and it would connect to that server on port 3000 as follows. When this is called, the socket will try to connect to the server and the server will receive this socket and the server will receive the socket and then it will emit back an event called hello and the second argument will have a payload called world. Therefore, when the client receives this hello message as sent from the server, it will receive the world as the payloader argument and then log world. Next, the client will emit howdy as an event with the payload stranger and the server will receive this howdy event with the payload stranger, which doesn't have to be a string. It could be a more complete object and the server will pr print stranger. So although this is very basic, I hope you start to see how we can communicate back and forth between the client and the server for our polls application. As always, you can go to this course's repository by going to my GitHub account and cloning or degitting the Ranker course. And there are some instructions in getting started here. Let's reopen the little diagram I had at the intro to show how and where we will add this gateway. This gateway will be provided into our overall polls module as something called a web and then capital socket gateway. And we'll create a class as we have for the controller in a very similar way. We will decorate it with an at sign WebSocket gateway controller. And this will be used to handle incoming and outgoing WebSockets traffic via the socket.io library. Now, WebSockets can also fall back to HTTP so that's kind of why I put REST HTTP here and then I put Socket.io for this gateway. In our case, it will mostly be using WebSockets, but I just wanted to clarify that it could fall back to HTTP. The gateway will then call the poll service, which could call the polls repository. So the rest of the architecture to the right of the controller and gateway should be very similar. To get Socket.io working in our application, we will create a class as is typical of most of the things we do in Nest.js, even though they say that's not necessary, but that's what all the examples are. And it's the common way of building things to use the most vague word possible. Let's create this polls gateway in our polls controller, and we'll call this polls.gateway.typescript. 
we'll first bring in some of the imports and then we'll export a class. This class is going to be decorated with the WebSocket gateway, as I briefly mentioned. Notice that we are going to add a namespace, and this namespace is a way to separate WebSockets into separate paths or features. We technically don't need this in our application because we're only going to be using WebSockets for this polls feature, but I just wanted to show it to you in case you need it. After fixing some formatting, I'll also mention that we're going to add a logger with the name of polls gateway, the name of this class, and we will inject the poll service into it, which we have access to, because if you remember our polls module, and in fact, our entire application module has access to configuration that we set up when the application launches. We're not going to use this poll service today, but this is just to understand that just as in the polls controller, we can call service methods like creating a poll or joining a poll, we'll be able to access similar methods that are appropriate to our gateway. Next of significance is that we're going to implement an interface that exists for these web sockets, and that is called on gateway init. And first of all, also notice that WebSocket gateway is not coming from Nest.js common, but it is coming from nest.js slash websockets. So we'll need to make sure we have that installed, although I think it's in the base nest.js package. This on gateway init basically just means we need to have a method called after init. If we need it for any reason, you can actually get access to the websocket server, which is created. This websocket server could be regular websockets or it could be socket IO. But if I just command click this, you'll see the definition comes in with a generic server. So if we were to get our server, we would import the socket IO server type and replace the T with that. Inside of after init, we merely just log that, hey, WebSockets gateway is initialized. Let's now just show that this is running and make sure you have Docker and Docker Compose up on your computer. I'll open my terminal and run npm run start. And all I want to show here is that we should have a log somewhere showing our gateway. But of course we don't because we have not provided this gateway to our application module or our polls module in this case. So let's open polls.module.ts and then we can add it as a provider. Unlike controllers that has a very specific config, the WebSockets gateway need to come in as a provider. So let's just add a comma here and say polls gateway and hope we get an import helper here. We do, bada boom, let's save. And hopefully now when the server restarts, you'll see we get a log for polls gateway or WebSocket gateway initialized. Unfortunately, we are not quite done yet. There are a couple of things that we'll need to handle, one of which we'll complete today. Recall in our main.typescript file that we had to use the app enable cores to set up some local host origins with a particular client port, which is extracted from an environment variable in this line of code. And that environment variable was client port. The unfortunate thing is that this client port is not forwarded on to the WebSockets or Socket IO server instance. Therefore, we have to come up with a way to apply it. Frequently, in the examples you see for setting up a polls gateway, you'll see that there will usually be a cores option added inside of the WebSocket gateway. And so you'll see something like cores, origin, and then an array of different origins that are acceptable for this WebSocket gateway. However, that would require us to hard code the port. And there's not really a good way to inject these runtime environment variables into our application. Or in other words, I didn't mean into our application, but into our at WebSocket decorator. 
there are some workarounds where you could use the dot env library directly to get it but that kind of disobeys or doesn't follow the structure of a nest.js application so let's remove this and i want to show an example in github that i found very useful and by github i meant stack overflow i'm misspeaking a lot today i must be tired and this is an example of an answer to a question to how to pass dynamic port to the WebSockets gateway in Nest.js. I'm somewhat surprised it doesn't have more answers, but I really liked it. What they showed you can do is you can extend an IO adapter, which is provided by Nest.js platform socket IO, which we've included in our known module. So we have access to this. And basically IO adapter has a create IO server function, which takes the port and server options. And we can use this to add to the options some origins. And that's what you see here. So we'll then add some cores origins, our local host ports that our React application will be running on, and then call super, meaning the main IO adapters, create IO server with these options. And so our socket IO adapter will take a constructor with our config service. And we have this config service in our main.typescript file. The normal or standard IO adapter only takes an app. So you can see in this constructor, they take an app and a config service, and then they call the super class constructor or the IO adapter class constructor merely with the app. But we'll have access to the config service. We'll be able to do something similar to this where we get our environment variable and then instantiate the IO server with the options having cores on them. Let's go back to our editor and set something up just about like this. Inside of the source folder, I'll put it at the root of the source folder. Why not? We'll add a socket slash or hyphen IO hyphen adapter dot TypeScript. And let's close this so we have some space. And we'll export a class called socket IO adapter. And this will extend IO adapter from platform socket IO. And then to this class, let's just do what they did in the demo for the constructor. So they imported the inest application context. And so we can import this from nest.js common and the config service we have from nest.js configuration or at nest.js config. So I think those imports are taken care of, except they have double quotes there for some reason. And then we call the super function of the IO adapter class constructor. Now we'll need to call create IO server and I'll copy and paste some code beneath this. And so we'll create it with a port or that's what this gets called with. And it gets called with options. Now create IO server could get called with various options, but we know that we're using socket IO. So I want to import the server options from socket IO. And so I'll add an import from socket.io. Next, we will now use the config service that we'll have access to, to get that client port. We'll create a cores configuration here, and then we'll add a logger statement, and we need to bring in the logger to our class. Let's do that above the constructor, create a private logger, which we'll import from nest.js common. And then we can say configuring socket IO server, and then we'll just pass these cores options. Then we'll create the options. We'll take all of the original uh, server options, and then we'll append to that or add to it cores that we just created in this block and then we'll call create io server of the super class meaning io adapter with these updated options with cores let's now save that and then let's open up our logs and see if we see anything yet there not quite let's maybe restart the application So I've restarted the application and we're not seeing this log and that's because 
I have forgot probably the most important step, and that is to actually apply or use this socket IO adapter. You see, I have all these notes written down and I should probably follow them, but let's go to main.ts and just beneath this enable cores, we can say app and then the state the thing is use websocket adapter and then we call this with that class we just created we'll say a new socket io adapter we'll import that and this takes the app lowercase app that we just created and the config service now hopefully with that we've now registered our socket io adapter and there's an error here let's see what that is Ah, I accidentally used use logger, so let's use a socket uh, web socket adapter. There we go. Accidentally used the wrong autocomplete. So now we have app.use web socket adapter with the app and the config service. And let's save. Let's go back to the terminal. And now hopefully we'll see some sort of log for this. It's actually up here. So you see that we log configuring socket IO server and then we log the object with the cores options here. So we say configuring socket IO server with custom options. And we see that it's local ho local host port 8080. This is just because the regex is not logging correctly. Probably if we go to our socket IO adapter and then do something like two string here. not to sting, <laughs> to string. We'll probably see that in the log better, but I'm not sure that will work correctly with the regex, so I'm happy with the log as it is. So let's resave that and we're good to go. That's all for today. I had wanted to handle connections and show how we can work with sockets and Postman, but after that detour to set up this custom adapter, I think it would have been a little bit too much. So next time we'll handle connecting clients to the server, we'll log when a WebSockets client is connected, and then we'll maybe create some events handlers for things like joining a room. See you then.